Hello everybody, this is Chris with Overclockers Club. I've got a power supply from Corsair. This is the HX850. The very first power supply I bought was this one right here, this TX750M. I bought this uh, about 10 years ago and I'm still using it. It is still running today. No problems, no issues. It has never let me down. But Today we're talking about this one, the HX850. And as you can see, it is already out of the box. I've been using it off and on for a while now, but uh, we'll take a look at the box in more detail here and look at some of the features. So the obvious thing is it is 850 watts. It does have a 10 year power, 10 year power supply, 10 year warranty, uh, which is really nice. And it's an 80 plus platinum on the efficiency. So let's see, let's look at the, uh, Let's look at the cable accompaniment first. So you've got the standard 24 pin ATX um, power cable. We've got two of these power cables here. This is what supplies power to your CPU. And you've got an eight pin, which is a four by four. And there are two of those. So there are actually uh, two of these cables. Uh, this also here has uh, six of these PCIe cables. There are actually three of these cables, but each cable has two of these eight pin connectors, which is a six plus two. And I'll show you that here in a moment. And what I really like here is it gives you a balance between your straight SATA connectors and your 90 degree SATA connectors. So there are eight of these. And then your peripheral cable, this is Molex. I'm not a real big fan of Molex, but you never know. Every once in a while you've got some equipment that needs a Molex connection. So you've got that. And there are six of these. And then down here, a uh, floppy drive adapter. Again, I don't know anybody who really even uses those anymore, but it is nice to have in case you need it. And let's see, looking at the side of the box, it has, and I'll show you on the unit here in a moment, but on the side, there's this little switch and it says single and multiple 12 volt. So what that does is if you're in single mode, push the switch up, that means all of the amperage uh, for the power supply is available to all of your connectors here, all of your sockets here uh, on the side. They all get the same. And if you, well, up. While I've got it, I'll just show you right now. So here's a little switch. So there's single, there's multiple. When it's on multiple, that means you have a limit of 40 amps to uh, any one of your connectors there. And back to the front of the box here, uh, we already talked about it's 80 plus platinum certified, 100% all Japanese, 105 degrees Celsius capacitors. Uh, what's important here is the zero RPM mode. Uh, fan noise level, of course, is very low. And then right when we get around 60% load, is when the RPMs of the fan start to kick up. Of course, over here, you're moving more air through your power supply to keep it cool because there's more of a load on it. So that's what the zero RPM fan mode is. And a lot of power supplies uh, are going to that. Efficiency. Now, that's an interesting subject here. So what does that mean? Uh, what this curve is saying, uh, what it's showing, so I'm, I'm using the yellow curve here, which is 115 volts. And uh, if we look at the maximum efficiency, it happens right around 50% load. So that means for 850 watts, which is what this one is, uh, the maximum efficiency is going to happen when I'm using about 425 watts of power. That doesn't mean I can't operate up here at this range and, and pull more uh, power. That just means I'll be losing a little bit of efficiency as I get closer to that. So what I wanna do is look at all of the components in my system. And there are online configurators that do that. Uh, you basically input what motherboard, what CPU, how many sticks of RAM there, how many RAM modules, what your graphics cards are, uh, whether you overclock or not. And it will give you a range of power supplies uh, that it would recommend. So for this system, let's just say this does draw around 450 watts, uh, worst case, so that means that this power supply would be a good choice because uh, I'll be using that right there in the 50% range uh, and I'll get the maximum efficiency. So I say all that to simply say that bigger is not necessarily uh, better. If your system would work fine with an 850 watt power supply, you can buy a 1000 watt, you can buy a 1200 watt, but you're really just spending money on extra horsepower that you're not really going to get much of an advantage uh, out of, you're not really going to be using it. So you're better off probably spending that extra money on something like maybe a fancier monitor or a, a higher 
grade graphics card. But uh, again, a thousand watt will work just fine. So anyway, back to the unit here. Now this unit is 180 millimeters wide or long, I should say depth. They're all about 150 millimeters on the width. So this is the width about 86 millimeters high and 180 uh, on the length. And that's important because it depends on what case you want to use. You may run into some issues with uh, the length of your power supply. So looking at the back of the power supply, this is the exhaust side. You can see the entire back panel is vented, which is good. That means you'll get the maximum airflow through there. And of course, there's the tag so you know which power supply you've got. Power switch, power connector there. Looking on the back side, this is the business end. This is where you plug in all of your connectors. And I love a fully modular power supply. Uh, even a, a hybrid or semi-modular power supply is nice because you uh, end up only plugging in the cables that you absolutely need, which means your cable management is just that much nicer when you're building your system. So this is a nice looking power supply. I like it. I like the way they've got the grid across there. Uh, for the intake on your fan. And here's that switch I was talking about earlier that I showed you for your 12 volt single or multiple rail. Uh, the other thing that I like is on this side, you can see it has your listing. Let me get a little closer there. So you can see if you ever want to know without having to dig back through paperwork or anything, there's your specifications for the power supply. And for anyone interested, this is the box that the power supply comes in. They do a pretty good job of using a closed cell foam that uh, houses the power supply, keeps it from getting banged up in shipping. Then there's a pouch here that all of your cabling comes in and it has a little Corsair logo there. So, I know people don't usually get all that excited about packaging, but that's how it comes to you. All right, now here's the owner's manual, and this is nice. This thing is like a novel. Of course, it's in several different languages, but it covers everything from the HX750 all the way up to the H HX1200, so everything you need to know about your power supply, the uh, cable accompaniment. So here's the HX850, which is what I have, and again, it shows you all of your cables, your efficiency, basically all the stuff that was on the back of the box. There's your specifications. So like on your 12 volt rail, you've got uh, available up to 70.8 amps. And then it shows you all of your cables with the length and the number of connectors. And the rest of this stuff here, a lot of it is just the uh, same stuff in different languages. But that's a big manual. Anyway, so what I'll do now is uh, plug it into my test system here. And what I'll do is load this thing up uh, as much as I can with the hardware that I have available. Put a load on the system. I've got a thermal camera. We'll sort of take a look at it. Uh, it doesn't really tell you anything of great importance. It's just kind of neat to see where the heat is. And uh, then I'll see if I can pop the cover off and take a look inside. Now, this is something you don't want to do at home. One, because you'll void your warranty when you uh, have to destroy the sticker here to get to the screw. And if you're not an electrical person, uh, you really need to stay out of your power supply because there are some very dangerous voltages in there. So anyone who's curious, I'll open mine so you don't have to open yours. Now, one thing I'll say on these modular power supplies, one thing that is important to me is how easily the connectors plug in because these things can be a real bear. And depending upon who the manufacturer sources their uh, connectors from, the sockets and the plugs, how well they, their uh, injection mold tooling is manufactured and how well they maintain it, a lot of times determines how well these things plug in. So, for example, this is the main 24 pin, so this end goes to the motherboard. So there are actually two connectors, so we'll see how easily. That plugged right in and a little stiff, but Oops, dropped some cables there, but uh, not bad. Of course, you know, a, a brand new power supply, you can expect the connectors to be a little stiff. And then I'll need uh, two of these for the uh, graphics cards that I'm using. So you can see how this is labeled. And we'll plug two of these in. 
since that's the PCIe cable. And I'll need one more. Okay, so this is for the SATA solid state drive. So we'll plug this in. Oh yeah, that plugs in very nicely. And then for the CPU, which those connectors are over here. So we'll plug one of these in. I got that right. Oh, there I am not paying attention, trying to plug the wrong end in. There we go. And of course that end goes to the motherboard and this end goes to the power supply. And you can tell it's fully seated because it makes a nice click. And then I need one more to power up the other graphics card. So I'll grab another one of these PCIe cables. Make sure I get the right end. And that plugs right in. All right, so now I'll start getting these connected to the motherboard. It's funny, no matter how many times you build a system, uh, every once in a while I still boot it up and something doesn't work. It's because I forgot to plug something in. And that happens. So you just want to take your time. Don't get into a rush. So this is for power to the CPU. And this motherboard, I'm using a 9900K, and this particular motherboard only has one 8-pin connector there for uh, the extra power here for the graphics card. I think I plugged two of these in. I only need one. And that plugs in right there. So here's the other one I don't need, so we'll just leave it off to the side for the moment. And here is one graphics card. So I need a six and an eight pin. This is a GTX 770 here. And the next one to it is a GTX 880. They're pretty old by today's standards, but for testing and stuff I do out here in the studio, they get the job done. All right, so one more. And this one, the GTX 680 only uses two six pin connectors. So there's one. And these cables are a little stiff since they're brand new and they've never been used. And there's number two. All right. All right, so I have everything powered up, no problems. I did add a second GTX 680. I forgot I had that, so I'll be uh, stressing the system with three GPUs and uh, get the overclock cranked up. Here's the spec sheet for the system, but uh, I'll get the overclock cranked up to 4.9 gigahertz. That seems to be where the sweet spot is with this motherboard and processor. And we'll put a load on it and see what happens to the power supply, if anything. That fan should kick on when it gets to the right amount of power being drawn from the system, but I don't know that this system will actually draw that much. So let's find out. All right, as soon as I hit the stress test start button, the fan here kicked on immediately. So that tells me I'm drawing enough power there for the fan to kick on. So I've got all three graphics cards stressed. I bumped the fan speed up to keep them cool. And I noticed, uh, I looked at my backup power supply and it shows I'm pulling a maximum of about 740 watts through the system. That does include the monitor there, but it only draws around 20 to 23 watts. So I'll let this run for a little while and then I'll break out the thermal camera. All right, so I got the thermal camera fired up there. You can see some of the heat on the radiator. You can definitely see which side has the uh, warm coolant coming in. And there's the motherboard with the graphics cards. You can see things are 
nice and toasty there too. And down here is the motherboard. Now looking at the power supply, we can see some of the connectors there are a little warm, which can be expected when you have a load on it. And then looking down from the top, now the colors there just show a differential in temperature, not an actual temperature. And I'm looking at the side here. You can see it's a little warm there on one side. And then we'll come around on the other side here. And there's the back of the power supply, the exhaust side. And we can sort of see through the back mesh panel there. There's some warmth on some of the components, which of course is to be expected. So with roughly 740 watts being pulled through this power supply, of course it's enough to get the fan spinning, but uh, it doesn't look like it's spinning anywhere near what I would call the maximum RPM. And as far as fan noise goes, I mean, I have to put my head right down against the fan here. And yeah, I can hear it pulling some air in, but it's not loud at all, especially if you get this thing inside of a case. Uh, I think any concerns of fan noise would be really minimal. Also, I didn't hear any coil whine at all under a load like this, which is also a good thing. And another thing I'll point out after the system cooled off, of course, the fan uh, speed cut down to zero there. So it's back into the zero RPM mode. So now I have everything powered down and I got the lid off and there's the fan that it uses an NR135P and from what I can find out the rating for RPMs maximum is about 1200. And looking inside those are all of the components and again do not open this on your own. Uh, things like capacitors over here they can store uh, very high charge, very high voltage for a very long period of time, even after the power supply is shut off and unplugged. And within the HX series, of course, there's a 1200, 1000, 850, and 750, so they've got a pretty good coverage there. And Corsair, of course, has several other series of power supplies. And I believe this series came out around 2017, so it's had a few years to prove itself. So overall, I would give this the Overclockers Club Gold Award. I like the fit, finish, Typical Corsair quality. Pricing right now, if you look at the Corsair site, the retail is $184, but I'm seeing it on Amazon closer to $200. And a good power supply is certainly something you don't want to cheap out on. So if you're looking for a darn good power supply, this is certainly one to check out. This is Chris with Overclockers Club. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.